and people who have locked are like paralleling because the issue with the natural hair community is people who people were trying to chase a certain hair type that's not realistic for them and within the lock community a lot of people get locks in hopes of having a certain hair type that actually isn't the hair type they have and when they do have the hair type that, when they do realize that their hair is kinky and not looking like lisa bonet and looking maybe more similar to mine or like somebody who's semi-freeform or manicured locks they have to you know you're confronted with a lot of anti-blackness that we've been internalized. Sometimes it don't make no sense. Does it really have to? There is nothing I can say. Hi, welcome to Maya's world. So today's video, I'm going to get straight into the topic. We are going to be discussing texturism. If you are new to my channel, my name is Mayowa. I like to talk about things related to colorism, texturism, and featureism. So today's topic is about the rise in content around people with locks perming their edges, attaching bundles to their hair, perming freeform locks. So for myself, I have freeform locks, which means that my hair naturally grows in this way. Um, I never manipulated it. This is just how it's come to be. And the reason that I started making content around my hair was because I started to realize a lot of texturism within the not only lock community, but just natural hair community in general. There's a video going around on TikTok that went viral of a girl who has um, manicured locks and she cut off the ends of it and attached bundles or like weave that would make the ends kind of curly like this. Um, not only has this topic been going on, but I've also seen people who have combed out the ends of their locks um, to try to re like make it kind of curl at the end. I made a video about a year ago talking about the desire within locks of like baby hair and like the, the loose curls at the end. Ask us to unpack our obsession with edges and with like this like fake lock, slick down, slick wet dog kind of looking long with the loose ends. Why is that what we want? It's like no matter what you do, if you take blackness, it's like whiteness is like a, a, a gravitational pull. Doesn't matter, doesn't, you think, and it's, we slowly end up just moving right back to lighter, looser things. But I think this is actually a really great example of texturism. But before I presume, I just want to say this right now. Okay, how do I say this? I feel like, I just want to say, I believe that everybody who has natural hair should do what they want to do with their hair. Personally, I don't even think I can be one to judge people for their hair texture because I've had a lot of different hairstyles in my life. I've permed my hair, I've permed my edges, I've had weaves, I've had bundles, I've had lace fronts, I've had everything. So when I'm saying this, I'm not saying this from a point of view of like a moral, like you're morally not a good person, but I also feel like we need to be able to talk about texturism and how certain aesthetics are promoting texturism. So I've been doing my little research and you know what I think the biggest disconnect within the natural hair community has been? within the lock community particularly, the obsession with Lisa Bonet's locks. Let me explain. Okay, when pretty much when, if you like go and you look at locks, people always glamorize Lisa Bonet's locks. If you don't know, Lisa Bonet was an actress and she was like, you know, she's been acting since the 80s and 90s. So, you know, she was in the Cosby show and Lisa Bonet is of mixed race. Ident um, Lisa so I feel like when people look at her hair texture and because she has a very loose, maybe 2C, 3A hair texture, people think that the locks are going to look like that. Also, I want to say that when people who have looser hair, like a 2A, a 3A, a 3B, a 3C gets locks, they are like massively promoted so much and like seen as um, lock goals and like ide ideal idealizations of what people want from locks. A lot of lock hair pages will be showing people who have a looser hair texture. So what happens, which is similar to what's happened in the natural hair community, what happens in lock community is that people are, because it's locked, it's kind of harder to see what hair texture somebody has until it gets to the ends. So because this lock is promoted the most, like locks with like the curly ringlets at the end, everyone is low-key chasing this kind of aesthetic. Or the locks where like the baby hair is super laid, everyone is chasing this aesthetic. And people like this are often seen as like super spiritual, super intact, super like natural, you know, nature girl, which I think is kind of ironic because this hair texture, like if you've had 2C, 3A, 3B hair textures and you lock your hair, 
the process of you having to unlearn texturism is not going to be anywhere as difficult as somebody who actually has kinky hair having to learn to love your hair. So what happens is you go from a community of natural hair, loose curls, where you're really seen as like um, the, the image of beauty, the image of like good hair, and then it comes into the natural hair community and the same thing gets replicated again. Sorry, it comes to the lot community and the same thing gets replicated again. So I think it's kind of interesting how a lot of the issues with the natural hair community who have loose hair, when I say loose, I mean like it's not locked, and people who have locked are like paralleling because the issue with the natural hair community is people who, people were trying to chase a certain hair type that's not realistic for them. And within the lock community, a lot of people get locks in hopes of having a certain hair type that actually isn't the hair type they have. And when they do have the hair type, that, when they do realize that their hair is kinky and not looking like Lisa Bonet and looking maybe more similar to mine or like somebody who's semi-freeform or manicured locks, they have to, you know, you're confronted with a lot of anti-blackness that we've been internalized. And so, you know, now there's becoming more solutions to deal with that kind of anti-blackness that never really was addressed. I think a lot of people who get locks get it in response to maybe not enjoying their hair type in the loose form, but the locks are just gonna actually exacerbate it, especially when that new growth comes in, when that your hair grows out and it's you know looking kinky in the front. And which is why I've always said people really need to unpack the obsession and desire and like fixation on constantly getting retwists and making comments about not looking as attractive or not being as attractive when you don't have a retwist. It's like really offensive, especially to the people who are free, free farming or who have wicks, whose hair is literally, un, it's not, there's no retwists. Like people will say things like you have to get a retwist every two months or you start to look dusty. All of this perpetuates texturism for people who are actually like really marginalized within black hair. Right. Also to another thing with locks, um, particularly locks that are unmanicured is uh, freeform locks, wicks, um, semi freeform becomes masculinized. It becomes seen as something that is, you know, um, associated with men, associated with being rough. So when we have people who are not men who have freeform locks, like it's a certain kind of misogyny within there. Also too, and I've said this before, but you know, like the, the dreads that have like a looser hair, looser curl at the end, a lot of times people who aren't black, who appropriate black hairstyle and get dreads, they also will have that ring at the end. So I feel like it's actually chasing a stereotypically non-black aesthetic. But with that being said, like, I understand that as black people, we are very creative and we will make do with what we can do. So I'm not even coming for the creativity of someone who does this because you can give black people a rock and some string and they're gonna give you a high couture ass bikini. We will turn out look, we can turn out looks from stones. We could turn out looks from beads. Like no one is coming for the innovation that we are bringing to hairstyles. I'm not coming for that. I understand it's very creative, but I also feel like just because something is innovative doesn't mean that it's also still perpetuating certain kinds of ism. So, and I also wanna say, I totally get that black hair is not spiritual for everyone. I've never thought that it was. I understand that hair, you know, you can have hair, you can have locks, you can cut it off. You know, that expression, I am not my hair really means something, but literally both mean things. Like I am not my hair also means something, but then hair to people also means something. Like we can accept that hair can mean nothing to us as individuals. And we can also accept that systematically black hair has been policed, um, criminalized, uh, obsessed over stolen from for centuries both can exist at in tandem a lot of people have locks for either spiritual reasons or aesthetics re aesthetic reasons the good things i would put under the spiritual category is getting locks because you want to learn to embrace your natural hair you want to learn to love your blackness you're doing it for spirit something completely unrelated um, within spirituality, right? But then there's also people who have um, hair that's um, locks that's completely aesthetics. Like I wanna try to, you know, dye it green, dye it purple, dye it blue, like explore and um, try out new styles and stuff like this. This is also, this is also a form of why people get locks. And I think it's a gradation. Some people are like half aesthetics, half spiritual, all spiritual, no aesthetics. But I do feel like I'm seeing, um, a rise in people having to confront colorism, having to confront texturism within the lock community right now. And I'm curious to see how we're going to handle it and what kind of conversations are going to come to the forefront. Um, so even things that I thought was so like interesting with locks is like, I have freeform locks and you know, a, a sister or a brother or a sibling to freeform locks is like wicks. And um, people really adultify wicks. And I've seen some really terrible, terrible discourse around um, how like how people who have wicks are seen as aggressive. Um, 
And yeah, like, I feel like, you know, we need to really have conversations with how people who have wicks are treated in the community, how people who have freeform are treated within the community, comments that we make around, you know, comments that people who have manicured make around their hair that still is like punching down on people who have wigs or freeform locks. And I remember reading a comment from one of my subscribers um, where they were like, they're an older person, and they were saying that in the 70s and in the 80s, locks were never something to get super manicured. That when they got locks, like back in the 70s and the 80s, I think they were talking about in England, when they would get locks in the 70s and the 80s, it was seen as something that was, you know, there was always new growth. Which is interesting because when you look at photos of people from like the 70s and 80s, you will see that a lot of people do have new growth. And then she was saying that it wasn't until like the 90s and 2000s when people started to have really, really manicured locks. And it was like with the rise of pushing that locks can be professional. So like this form of like, wanting to have our hair seen as professional and like the really scalpy look and when i say really scalpy look i mean just really manicured where you're able to see the whole scalp that's something that has become you know seen as more of a socially acceptable hairstyle but with that being said the pressure to constantly upkeep and constantly manicure it has also been taken to another level so if we're having a rise of people manicure their locks because we're trying to upkeep this idea that this is very professional it's going to affect people who have free form locks. It's going to affect people who have wicks. It's going to affect people who have semi free form. It's going to especially, and it's especially going to affect people who have free form locks that are short. And I say this every video, but no one had no one like the way people who have short lock, free form locks, short wicks. It's like really hard. So I think we really need to have an honest conversation with um, where we're going with hairstyles, the difference between aesthetics and spiritual hairstyles, and just like. Um, um, you know, removing ourselves from desiring uh, locks that look like this and, be, and, and being okay with the idea that our locks can be thin, our locks can be, can be um, uh, frail, you know, not everything has to be um, full, not everything is going to have a looser hair texture, we have to be okay with ourselves and that's like the hardest part and I have to say even too, I have like moments where I even struggle because something that I do that I've only been trying to stop doing in the past couple weeks. Like anytime I make videos or I go to do like a photo shoot or any kind of thing where I'm going to take pictures, I always like wash my hair because I want my hair to like fall down a little bit more. And I really had to unpack like why I do that so much because I think that sometimes um, I feel like when my hair falls down a little bit more, it's seen as more Eurocentric. So I'm also, you know, I'm being transparent and I'm saying these are the ways that I've also struggled with this as well. But even with me um, putting water in my hair and, you know, like it's kind of like this you know it's and it's funny because from your perspective y'all probably can't even tell the difference between when my hair is freshly washed and when it's not because right now like for example my hair is not washed like i didn't wash it to fall down because my hair is big regardless of if it's washed or if it's not but it's like psychological things that you do to like make yourself feel a little bit better and i'm trying to do that you know the past couple of videos i haven't um immediately washed my hair to do the video i'm just making videos and doing my makeup and kind of going on this way but there's always like i just want to say that there's it's like it's a constant um Anal analyzing of yourself and that's okay and it doesn't mean that I am I hate a certain kind of girl you know you one thing about me you're not gonna ever get me to to this to hate black women I'm sorry like whatever we do to survive this system I'm really gonna stand behind it for the most part because I know that this is that we didn't create this dynamic but I also feel like we should be able to have discourse and I say that every video so let me know what y'all think. And if you have heard this thing where like back in the day, people didn't have such manicured locks, like let me know because that's something that I never like thought about until um, this person said it. And if you are the person who said it, like write it down below because I know I didn't give credit. But yeah, thanks for watching. Also, we made it to the end. This is my partner's shirt. You know what I'm saying? They're half Jamaican, half Nigerian. So what's up to all my yardies? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.